Francis Marion basketball coach a tough loss in that last game of the regular season to USC Spartanburg just some brief comments on that game before we take a look at the videotape of course I think that one game Sam probably knocked us out of a, a fourth or third place finish in the district playoffs but uh, we play hard and we've had a lot of injuries and uh, we've been up and down a little bit this year and you know I think it's a credit to the young men that they finished fifth in the district and that is an accomplishment uh, since the coaches picked us probably eighth spot Let's take a look right now at the videotape of the Patriots in action against USC Spartanburg. While you watch the action between the Patriots and USC Spartanburg, let's review the 78-79 season for the Patriots of Francis Marion. The red, white, and blue opened the campaign with an 87-67 win over Morris College of Sumter and followed that up with a 102-74 trouncing of Wingate College. Next on the schedule was North Carolina Wesleyan, and the Patriots won that one 90 to 82. Next was a 77 to 62 decision over St. Andrews, and the Patriots were undefeated at 4 and 0. Top-rated Lander was the fifth team on the schedule, and the Patriots went to Greenwood and dealt the Senators an 84 to 78 loss. Game number six was against the Benedict Tigers at Smith College Center and the Tigers defeated the Patriots by four points, 91 to 87. USC Aiken was next and the Patriots won that one by five, 79 to 74 to raise their record to six and one. Then just prior to Christmas, the Furman Paladins administered a sound thrashing to the red, white, and blue, whipping the Patriots in Greenville, 95 to 60, and the Patriots record heading for Christmas Day was six and two. Norwich University was the ninth team on the schedule and Francis Marion defeated them 84 to 74 and followed that one up with a 117 to 87 win over Tusculum College. Benedict dealt another two point loss to the Patriots this time 75 to 73 and the Patriots followed that one up in the 12th game of the season with a 113 to 95 round of Coastal. Newberry defeated the Patriots in game number 13, 87 to 63, and Winthrop dealt another loss to the Patriots, 71-64 in game 14. Francis Marion rebounded in game number 15 with an 82-54 win over Coker, and then Erskine put a two-point loss on the Patriots, 58 to 56 in game number 16, a tough NAIA District 6 loss at Due West in overtime. Francis Marion followed that one up with a 17-point win over Coca College. The score was 67 to 50, and then a nine-point win over USC Spartanburg, 71 to 62. Probably the most exciting game of the season was against Lander College and Smith College Center, and the Patriots won that one by a point, 69 to 68, their second victory of the season over the top-rated Senators. St. Andrews administered a tough loss, 64-62 in game number 20. And then the Patriots got an outstanding effort against Pembroke State and won that one 92-75. The College of Charleston topped the Patriots by one, 82-81 in Smith College Center. And then Francis Marion lost a six-point decision in overtime to Coastal Carolina in Conway. The final score there, 75-69. Francis Marion rebounded with a fine 14-point win over Allen, 76-62. Followed that one with a loss to USC Aiken by eight points, 85-77 in three overtime periods. The Patriots then rebounded one of their finest performances of the season, a 92-67 thrashing of Erskine, before they defeated Allen, 75-72 in one overtime period at Smith College Center. 
Game number 28 was against the College of Charleston. In Charleston, Francis Marion, with two injured players, went to Charleston and defeated the Cougars 74-58. to And the final regular season game was against USC Spartanburg and Smith College Center. Patriots lost that one by three points, 69-66. to Their record heading into today's contest against the Winthrop Eagles is 18-11. And what did the players think of the 78-79 season? I put the question to each one. I was kind of hoping that we could turn out maybe a better record, but I think all things considering injuries and everything, I feel like we turned out a possibly one, a real good year. In your first year with the Patriots, what about your performance? Were you satisfied and pleased with the progress that you made? Yes, I was. I was real pleased with my free throw percentages and field goal percentages. What's the key for the Patriots to enjoy good playoffs and possibly get to Kansas City? Well, I think when we go up to Rock Hill, being our first game Saturday at 3 o'clock, we need to play the good defense and play the total, have a total team effort in the game. Well, uh, this, this is another new team this year, like we had last year, so it was really hard to like, plan where you want things to end. I thought where we finished up, we should have did better, but you know, as an end, I guess we was all right anyway coming in fifth. How about your performance? Were you satisfied and pleased with what you were able to contribute and your personal goals? Did you reach them? Well, I didn't reach my personal goals as such this year. I plan to hopefully reach them before I leave here. But uh, I was very happy with my free throw shooting percentage. I brought it up quite well. So. Well, Sam, it wasn't necessarily at the end. We were just kind of up and down the whole year. Some good teams we'd play good against and beat them, and then we'd go up and play a weak team and not that well against, and we just lost a lot of close games. Like last year, we won a lot of them at home, but real, real close ones. And this year, we just didn't pull them all out. Did you think that your contributions were what you thought you could contribute? Did you contribute more or less than you thought you could at the beginning of the season? Well, at the beginning of the year, we really didn't know who was going to be where or what. I knew I had certain things I had to do, and I, was, I just went more as the team did too, having some good games and some bad games, just kind of up and down as the season went. So I was, wasn't that pleased with that as far as consistency went, but overall we had a good year, and I guess I did all right too. Yeah, yeah I think I did. I, you know, I came off the bench and I kept the floor going. You know, I didn't, I didn't stop it all. I, you know, I'd rather come off the bench anyway because you know I usually get in foul trouble, and you know. What's the key for the Patriots now if they're going to win these three games in the upcoming tournament and go to Kansas City? Oh, we got to play three super games. That's yeah. all that. What in particular have you got to do? Better defense, well, better yeah, offense? Yeah, we got to play better defense because I think a lot of times we, we had a lot of games won and then our defense break down about the end of the game, about the last two minutes. So I think we ought to play 40 minutes of good defense. Uh, Sam, uh, we had a good, well, I worked hard at the starting of the season, but uh, I didn't really come around until late in the season. Uh, I still haven't, you know, I haven't did what I would what I would have liked to have did. But uh, I'm happy where I am right now. Uh, the upcoming tournament, which begins at Rock Hill today, what's the key for you to beat Winthrop, and what's the key for the Patriots to possibly win it all? Well, Sam, we've got to play good defense, uh, get on the boards, the offensive and defensive, and take a good shot selection, and just play a good team ball. I mean, we can, we can take it all. Yeah, I was pleased. I was glad that I could come off the bench and help the team when we were down sometimes. Um, I think our biggest problem was inconsistency. Some games we'd be up and play super, and other games we just look bad, you know. But I think we'd get better in the tournament. Did the season turn out like you expected, or had you and the other members of the team possibly hoped to win 20 ball games? Well, we had set a goal at the beginning of the year that we would win 20 games, but um, we had problems uh, during mid-season. Some people got sick and others were injured, you know, but those are just problems you can't help. Well, uh, to me, Sam, personally, when there's, you know, it's a big game and there's a lot of, you know, a lot of things on the line, I think, I, you know, it just brings out the best to me. It just helps you play a lot better when there's that pressure, that pressure situation when everyone's counting on you. And, you know, I'm just happy that things turned out the way they did. Were you pleased with the 
teamwork and the progress that the team made all year were you, along with some of the others, disappointed that the Patriots didn't get 20 in the regular season? Well, on the whole, I thought, you know, we did pretty good. But like, you know, a lot of the guys were saying, we had a lot of inconsistency and there was a couple games that we really should have, you know, beat these teams really good and we just were, weren't up for the game. And, you know, we were lackadaisical. We had a lackadaisical attitude about everything and we were just not really putting our minds to it. And it turned out that we lost the, the games that we should have won. And that's, you know, the main reason why we're not, you know, 24 and 7 or whatever. We. We were just so inconsistent against the bad teams, but the good teams we could play play really well against. But coming into the coming into the playoffs against Winthrop, I think playing against a good team like Winthrop Tall and you know has a lot of talent off the bench and all, I think we have a good shot. What about your performances and your goals as a freshman? Your first year here, were you satisfied and pleased with what you were able to accomplish and what you were able to contribute to the Patriots? Well, as the year developed. Coach Hill, you know, gave me more playing time. He played me in, you know, in a lot, you know, more games, and all. And I feel I developed, you know, you know, enough for my freshman year going into my sophomore year. Yes. Uh, well, I did learn a lot. Uh, in in this league, I played in a junior college league last year, and uh, in this league, things are just, you know, it's night and day. It's two different things. There, it was just run and gun, and here. Things are a lot more complicated. You have to concentrate a lot more on things like defense and, you know, uh, just fronting the man down low and things like that. And it was uh, kind of hard to pick up at first, but I think I learned a little bit. What about the Patriots now heading into the playoffs? What's the key defense? Uh, I don't think there's one particular thing you can single out like that. You know, we just have to do everything to beat a, a good team like Winthrop and uh, the rest of the teams that are there, defense, offense, you know, rebound, just the whole thing, the whole game. Well, like the other fella says, you know, sometimes against the weaker teams we just weren't ready to play. We'd take them too lightly. Against the good teams we'd seem to always be ready to play and we showed we could play with the best of them. What about you now individually, the goals that you had set and the things you wanted to do? Were you satisfied with what you did prior to your injury? Well, I was pretty well satisfied. I set goals of shooting over 50% from the floor and over 80 from the free throw line. I accomplished both of those, I'd say. The two major disappointments I had this year were not being on the all-tournament team in our own tournament and also not being able to play in the playoffs. Well, I feel we had a good year, but very inconsistent. Why the inconsistency? You were around the players and were able to observe from a spectator's standpoint during the game and also from a player's standpoint during practice. Why the inconsistency that the Patriots had this season? Um. We just uh, worn out for some games like others. Like any, we can beat anybody. Anybody can beat us too. But we just got to play. In the tournament which comes up this Saturday, what's the key for the Patriots? Everybody else says defense. Do you agree? Yeah, well, I believe our defense is good. We got to score some points. We got the people who can do it. Well, it's going to be tough now. You know, we've got a few injuries that's going to hamper us, but we'll have to play really well. You know, you've got to put three good games together in a row to win it. And we can do that as well as anybody can. One of the hardest working groups on the campus are the cheerleaders. They worked many hours prior to the season to get their cheers perfect and learn all of their pom-pom routines. And that's not to mention the time they spent making signs, posters, and banners promoting school spirit at Francis Marion for pep rallies and for ball games. And now let's meet the 78-79 cheerleaders. Tammy Lambert, I'm from Andrews, South Carolina, and I'm majoring in elementary education. My name's Kathy Robbins, I'm from Hartsville, South Carolina, and I'm majoring in sociology. My name is Betsy Scherer, and I'm from Florence, majoring in math. I'm Rita Davidson, and I'm from Florence, and I'm undecided about my major. My name's Cecilia Hamilton, I'm from Florence, and I plan to major in math. My name is Ann Crawford. I'm from Marion, South Carolina, and my major is Business Administration. I'm Gail Moody from Marion, South Carolina. I'm a senior, and my major is Math. My name is Marion Gibson. I'm from Florence, South Carolina. I'm a pre-nursing major at Francis Marion College, and I'm in my freshman year. And why did the girls choose to become cheerleaders at Francis Marion? I put the question to each one. I played basketball in high school for five years and I cheered for six years. So 
So when I came to France as mayor, and I just kind of wanted to keep up the tradition. I wanted to be a cheerleader because this is my third year at Francis Marion, and I've really gotten involved with some activities on campus. And so I thought being a cheerleader would be a good way to get involved and to help the school and help promote school spirit. Okay, well, I play basketball in high school too, like Tammy. <laughs> and, well, I played for five years, and I cheered for the boys' game after I played. And so I just wanted to keep on cheering. <laughs> Well, I enjoy a good basketball game, and um, I enjoy cheering because I like to show spirit, you know, for a good basketball team. I cheered in junior high and high school, and I enjoy supporting the team and watching the crowd get up and excited about a game. My main reason for wanting to, wanting to be a cheerleader here in college is because I've cheered for three years in high school, and I was also nominated as an All-American cheerleader. I feel that by being a cheerleader here in college, I can help to promote school spirit and lead the guys on to a better victory. And I like cheerleading because it gives me an opportunity to get to all of the guys' games, home and off, and gives me a chance to support the team, you know, when they are down as well as when they are winning. The reason I want to become a cheerleader is everyone says it's commuter college and you need to get involved in order to have fun. So I thought well, cheerleading would be a good way to meet a lot of people because I was new and I didn't know but a few people. We kept improving as the season went on and we had a real tough schedule. Uh, you know, we've had nine losses but uh, I believe a seven of those nine losses were to Division I schools, and that really says a lot for us being able to even go on the floor and play like South Carolina to a six or seven point ball game. Um, and if we could, if we had scheduled uh, the teams in our in our district in Division II, uh, and if we hadn't played these good teams, we could have easily uh, been 23 and two or three. But uh, come tournament time, it really pays off to play those good teams. And I was real proud of our freshmen the jobs that they did uh, playing these, these teams because a lot of them came in and uh, had never played that kind of competition before and, and really did a good job. Elaborate just a bit more on some of these new players that you brought in. You brought in some outstanding freshmen who really helped the club, gave some depth and some speed and some height and in some cases some good outside shooting. Just briefly comment on the role that they played this year. Well. Um, you know, we had a lot more people uh, in double figure scoring this year. You know, Pearl led the way, but uh, Lynette Mickle came in as a freshman, and we've played her at every position on the floor. And uh, she is uh, just a good, strong athlete, and she is capable of scoring uh, 20 points a game when given the opportunity. Dale Robinson is another one that came in, and she started off having a couple good games, and then she uh, went to a slump. But the last uh, three or four games, she's got back on uh, the play inside, and she's really had some good games. And uh, Martha Williamson has been playing uh, real well. And uh, just uh, as a whole, the, the new kids have really been doing a good job. And like uh, we lose Pearl and Cherry Montgomery, and coming up next year, we only have one senior next year, and that'll be Deborah Wilson. So uh, you know, we're looking for, even though we're going to lose uh, you know, 30 points a game when Pearl, we're, but I think these other kids can make up uh, with the scoring, and we've got some good people coming in also next year. You had some good veterans on this year's ball club. I think we could talk two hours about Pearl, but hold it to one minute and tell everybody what Pearl meant to this ball club. Well, she did it all. She uh, is a super ball handler. Uh, here in the last four or five ball games, she has concentrated on rebounding, and she has had at least uh, 15 to 20 rebounds each game. Uh, here at the end, and you know she's just really gotten into the rebounding, uh, along with the scoring. So she's just a strong player all the way around. As far as I'm concerned, she's the best all-around player in the country. And um, you know it's really going to be a big loss for us, and it's going to take us probably the first six or eight games next year to get used to uh, not having a, a player who can score from 25 to 35 points a game. But uh, you know she's just a super player, and you, you, I can't say enough about her. Uh, and if people in Florence, if they hadn't come out and seen her play, then they have really missed something. What about some of the other veterans now that you had? You had three or four other players that were back from last year to go along with Pearl. What did they contribute in this 78-79 season? Well, Deborah Wilson uh, has played the point for us, and she has been plagued with injuries for the last couple of years, but she keeps coming back and, and uh, just being a consistent uh, player for us. Martha Williamson, whose brother Nat uh, is um, one of the Men Patriots, that really helps out. She uh, uh, really 
is a super fine athlete and she can uh, do a good job inside. She's small, only 5'9", but she can play inside. I don't care how tall they are. She's quick. She's got good moves. And uh, when they're all playing together, I, you know, we, we really can play some good ball. You touched on it briefly just a moment ago, but I want to ask you one final question. You lose Pearl, but you got most everybody else back. And considering the improvement that this year's team has shown since the first day to where you are right now, does next year look as good as this year or perhaps even better? Well, I have high hopes of next year. Uh, we will have some height next year. We uh, already have a transfer coming in that's six one and a half, and uh, uh, we've got some good recruits coming in and a couple other girls that are over six foot. And so we're looking for a, a real good season next year. You know, it's going to, like I said, we're going to lose Pearl and it's going to uh, take some away from us at the first of the season. But, you know, these other kids are going to have to take a little more responsibility. And I feel like we will have a, a, another successful team next year. In addition to those you've already met, there are others behind the scene who are needed to make a successful season. And they include the managers, trainers, scorers, and the stat crew. And they offer their reactions to the work that they must do. After the games, we have to uh, combine the total stats and we have to get in touch with all the media. And uh, sometimes it's, you know, like we call the state paper, they want everything you can think of plus a little more. And, uh, it's, you know, so it's, sometimes it's pretty late work, but I enjoy it. I know from times to time when we've had problems and had to call the officials over to the uh, scorers table, it's, I've really been nervous. And, and you've got the coaches looking at you to say, what's going wrong, what's going wrong, and you, you don't want them to yell at you. And it gets bad at times. Has it been rewarding in doing this type of work, keeping stats and keeping the scorebook for the Patriots? Oh, yeah, definitely. I've been around athletics all my life, and I love to be involved in some part of the athletic program, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. The main thing is to make sure they have the uniform for the games and practice. I put their practice badge in the locker before every practice, and I get their uniforms and warm-ups and fold them, put them in the lockers. And for away games, I pack their travel bags. How about at practice? What are your functions you have to help with raising and lowering goals and getting the equipment out and putting it back up and things like this? Yeah, I do that. And plus, if I ask Coach Hill if he needs the score clock set up. And then also we have toss bats I set up. I just sort of like a go for, just go for this and go for that. Very hard job, but it's rewarding. Do you enjoy being around the basketball program? Yeah, I just love being, having, being around last athletics and everything. It's really rewarding. For the game, our, anybody has an injury will come in, and we'll take care of that injury. May it be whirlpool or getting taped or, or ultrasound or whatever. We try to get the kid as, uh, at his maximum amount of uh, participation that we can have him for on the floor. During the game, if there's an injury, I'll do my best to get the kid back on the floor and ready to go before the ball game's over. And I help coach keep up with the fouls and timeouts and anything during the game that I might see that he may not see, just trying to help out. The heartbeat of the Francis Marion Basketball Show is upstairs in the director's booth, for in that room the final product, or what you see on your screen, is produced. Director Hal Campbell works over a massive board of buttons, levers, and other devices which lets him select the shot he wants at a particular time. Hal is a veteran of the broadcasting business and has been a tremendous asset to Francis Marion basketball. Joel Bergeron is the audio man. It is his responsibility to make sure that the voice levels of myself and Coach Hill are balanced and that the proper amount of background noise is filtered in when we are discussing the game film to allow for a good effect. And probably the brains behind the entire operation is Ross Fleming, who is the coordinator for the Cawthon Media Center at Francis Marion College. Without his knowledge, assistance, and advice, the show would have been difficult to produce. And one other person who is important is our camera crew. Trudy McKenzie not only works camera during the production of the show, but she also runs one of the remote video cameras which film the game action, which you see each week. Coach Winthrop, you got to have a good ball game to beat them. Probably the tallest team in uh, District 6 and possibly one of the taller teams in the uh, country. And they'd be starting two 6'10 players inside. And of course, they beat us by seven points in Smith College Center in uh, January. Uh, we're a somewhat banged up ball club. Bob Wilson, Daryl Bloom are unable to dress out with injuries. So, you know, we've got to dig deep and uh, dig hard. It, it's all over now. We should uh, falter against Winthrop. If you get by Winthrop in that first round, second round, and third round competition, same game plan, good, tough defense, are you going to change anything depending upon? Who you should draw 
if you get past Winthrop in the first round? Right now, Sam, with the injury situation as it is, we go in each ball game and uh, we're going to wait and get the feel of the uh, tempo and we're going to try to dictate the tempo. We may slow it down uh, and spread them out a little bit uh, because of uh, the limited personnel that we have right now. Good luck to you and the Patriots against Winthrop and also in the remainder of the District 6 tournament. Maybe the team can go to Kansas City. Any final words before we leave for this final show? I wouldn't count the Patriots out yet uh, because they've got a lot of heart and they've won some big basketball games and they've done it without some of the top two uh, players on the team. So we're optimistic about the situation, Sam. We're going to give everything we got. I want to tell you how much is meant to me to work with you this year. I think you're a fine coach. A credit to Francis Marion, a credit to the basketball profession. You've done such a wonderful job in bringing good basketball to Francis Marion and to the Florence area. And I look forward to another year next year working with you on the Francis Marion Basketball Show and also covering your fine team. Uh, you're too kind, uh, Sam, and we appreciate what you've done also and all the people involved. It's, it's been a great year for Patriot basketball. That's it for this edition of Francis Marion Basketball. This is the final show of the season. We hope that you've enjoyed each and every minute that we've tried to put together and bring into your homes on Saturday and Sunday afternoon. We'd like to hear from you, the fans out there who watch the show. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to see more of next year, and perhaps what you want to see less of. Thank you very much for your time, and we'll see you next year for Francis Marion Basketball.